Hello guys and welcome to another video. So today we are going to take a look at a new cloud gaming service. You can it's it's basically a cloud PC similar to Shadow PC. You can use it for gaming. It's that's mostly what it's intended for. Uh, but you can use it for other things that you would use a PC for as well. I'm going to get into showing you things that, um, about sign up, how to set it up, uh, what the pricing tiers are, what you get. We're going to go inside of the PC and test some performance. We're going to do some Cinebench, some speed test. And we're going to test some games because of course that's the most important part so we're going to get into all that in just a minute if you are new here to the channel think about subscribing if you're interested in game testing or cloud gaming i handle things here like stadia ps now x cloud geforce now shadow pc now maximum settings and then actually quite a few other cloud gaming services i cover here on the channel as well um, i also do a lot of pc builds i have four or five pcs now i do game testing on and uh, i'll be building another pc shortly I have a couple of laptops that I do test on and I have all the consoles that sometimes I do game comparisons on. So I just have a passion for gaming and that's what this channel is all about. Testing out games and hardware, having fun and, and that kind of thing. So if that interests you, think about subscribing to the channel and I, uh, I really appreciate it. So moving on, let me let you know, this company is out of Canada. I am on the US East Coast and this works. So the service for me is working very well. And we'll talk about latency. We'll talk about uh, the stream quality and all that when we get uh, over into the video, but they are based out of Canada. So I also have to let you know that this service is still in beta. So they're getting ready to launch their new beta sign up website. I don't know how long the service is going to be in beta for, but they don't want to go full launch um, and come out of beta until they're sure they've got it, how they want it, and that it's working well for people, which is why they have content creators like me testing the service. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that, but Maximum Settings has, has supplied me with the two builds that I've been testing out here and getting ready for this overview. For this video, I will only be pretty much covering the highest tier, uh, the one I've been using the most to do the overview here for the service. But going into the future, I will be testing multiple tiers of their service and I will be testing games for the foreseeable future uh, with maximum settings. So they are being added to everything that I test and compare to here on the channel. Um, so with all of that out of the way, I think we covered everything. Let's go ahead and jump into the video and let's take a look at how you go and sign up for maximum settings and how do you use it? All right, so here we are on the Maximum Settings main website. I won't spend too long here, but I do want to go over a few things with you so you get an idea for the service here. Uh, this is a Canadian-based dedicated gaming PC service. They are in beta technically right now. Um, your old computers will run the latest games like brand new. Connect any of your devices such as Android, iOS, PC, Mac, Chromebook, PS Vita, and even a Raspberry Pi. You can use Moonlight Client to stream games to it. You can try it for free. We'll talk about that a little bit more as well. Cutting edge tech with their CPUs and GPUs. Yes, definitely. They have some of the best CPUs for a cloud PC service that I've used yet. Of course, Moonlight will be their third party app. They do have multi device support like we were just talking about. We do have up to 4K resolution. You can stream it using the uh, Moonlight client and a capable 4K screen or 1080 or 1440p as well. 120 FPS streaming with Moonlight. I've been using that on my 165 hertz monitor here during testing. And with Bluetooth controller support, I have used my PS4 controller, my Xbox controller, my keyboard, and my mouse. Um, so we'll scroll down here just a little bit. Quick software overview. So uh, as we scroll down here, you'll see PC management interface. When you get your account, this is where you'll come to start your machine, restart it, shut it down, reset it, uh, go to your console when needed, um, and things like that. We're going to be using Moonlight to stream this using NVIDIA's game stream with that service. Uh, and we're going to go over that more in the video in a little bit. We'll take a look at the settings. So take a quick look at the packages here. You've got a 35 cents, 55 cents, and 75 cents per hour. That's an RX 480, an RX 5700, and an RX 5700 XT. And those are with an Intel i7-6700 on the lowest, and then 3900X on the next two packages, a beast of a CPU. You've got 12 gigs of RAM and 24 respectively. And you can see on the highest here, we've got that 512 gigabyte SSD, three terabytes of storage, 500 down and 150 up 
on the speed. Really good. So now on NVIDIA's packages, I'm testing the top two tiers here, 45 cents, 65 cents, and one dollar. So you've got the GTX 1070, 1080, and 2080 super builds uh, with an, a Ryzen 5 1400, 1600, and 3900 X respectively. I am really enjoying the 2080 super build. I'm working on both GTX 1080 and 2080 super builds, and I'll be doing a video on the GTX 1080 and many other videos on the service. But I am really enjoying using the 2080 super build with the 3900X with the 24 threads, all that RAM, and loads of storage for games and a really good internet connection. I'm having a great experience with maximum settings on that 2080 super build. But I would like to see some other pricing. I would like to see some unlimited pricing tiers so that we could have hourly for your more casual gamer and unlimited tiers for people that might actually be gaming those 20, 30 hours a week, like a lot of people that I do know. Um, so it could get a little bit more expensive. So I would love to see this be one of the first companies to have a nice hourly end unlimited uh, package for these maybe something similar to shadow where it's like 49.99 for a 2080 or something like that on here for the super um i think 30 for their 2080 but the cpu power here and the amount of ram and storage for this price blows away anything else i've seen on any of these kind of cloud pc cloud gaming services so um but we'll see this i know it's in beta this isn't horrible pricing but it could be better um answers to questions so i like this here if you sign up, it only takes two to five minutes after ordering. Uh, your network uh, requirements, 10 to 30 megabits per second, depending on the resolution and the FBS, and you can work on the bit rate for your connection quality. Um, and yes, you can use this over Wi-Fi. I have done it a good bit. It works just fine. Uh, hardwired is better. Um, acceptable jitter and latency. So you do need a good connection. Now they talk about 120 being tolerated and under 40 is better yes definitely especially if you're playing a game like call of duty um, i'm sensitive to anything over like 20 uh, on there but i'm definitely getting better than that with my experience anyways um, you can participate in this uh, beta it's 100 hours of free no billing information required so this is a really good thing maximum's doing here you can get your hands on a plan and try it out 100 hours no money out no anything needed they don't give out any free games this is a cloud pc you use your pc games that you're buying on your pc isolation of hardware i like this one two customers never share the same set of resources this is your personal gaming computer fully dedicated to you including the cpu gpu ram and motherboard for the term of your subscription that's one of my favorite answered questions right there normal latency as i always say completely depends on where you live your internet where the data center is all that kind of stuff um, crypto mining sure they do allow cryptocurrency mining as long as it's not a trial account and they do own their own facilities, like I said, out of Canada. So as quickly as I could, those are some pretty good questions to have answered off the bat. So that is their main page. This is where you sign up. This is where you check out all the information. After you get signed up, we go to log in and set up the PC. Um, and that's what we're going to do. First, you need to download Moonlight. So go to their site, download. I'm going to do mine for my PC. You can do it for all the different devices. A lot of support here. And you're gonna download and install your Moonlight and get that ready to go. So here we go. We're gonna do the old agree, install. This is only gonna take a mere second here. And then we will have to restart the PC after installing this, no worries. With the magic of editing, we can do that really quick and come right back in here. So here we go with our restart. Let's get that done. And let's keep moving along here. So once you get once you get done, we restarted. You open your Moonlight for the first time. So it's going to be searching for PCs. Don't worry about that. It always will automatically, unless you turn off the option, it will automatically search. So in here, you've got your resolution FPS. Now I do 1440p for all my gaming, and I'll do 120 I'm able to leave that bitrate alone with my home internet connection. You may need to adjust. Beautiful quality, though, uh, at that. I'm not using VSync at the moment, and I'm not having any problems, so I've been leaving that turned off. It may be something that you want to experiment with. You've got audio options, UI options, um, different optimizations for your mouse, trackpad, and controllers, optimized game settings, and you can change your video encoders and even do unlocked. Uh, unsupported FPS options as well. So that's pretty much all your settings that you'll have 
access to with Moonlight, get these tweaked how you want them. And uh, everything has been working really, really well for me without any problems uh, whatsoever for this. So when you get to this point, you're going to need to be able to add a PC. So how this is done is through an IP address and it can to your rig. And then you're going to be needing to put in a code for game stream. So you go to the login page and you're going to use your username and password for your new maximum settings account. You get logged in and here's that console we were talking about. Start your machine. And it's just going to take a few minutes. You'll see the RAM usage come on. You'll see CPU coming on. You have different options in here for um, what you're going to want to do. Restart, shut down, force shut down, factory reset. You can upgrade and downgrade your service, get usage reports, but you want to go to your console. So once you see everything's looking good, go to your console and then click start console. This is going to allow you to see your PC right here through the browser. You're not going to game this way or really use the PC this way, uh, but this gets you started. And it's also a quick way to get in and do some editing or some customizing. So you got to open GeForce now, GeForce experience rather. When you go in here, go ahead and either make an account or sign into your NVIDIA account. And on your settings page for GeForce experience, you can see here we've got our RTX 2080 and everything. Go to Shield, and you're going to need to make sure Game Stream is on because you're going to have to add this file. This is what's going to give you access to stream the PC. So you would want to click Add here because you won't have that. Go to this PC and your local disk. Go to Windows. Go to System 32. And then you're going to search for that MSTSC file, and it's going to pop up. And then when you see it, you can click on it. And then for you, you would click open to add it. I've already added it, so I'll just close this out. But once you once you do that, that put that'll put that file right in there for you. And since I've already got it, we're good to go. So once you have that done, you can close that out. You can stop your console, which we'll do over here. Right there. Stop your console. No, we don't need to save that. Okay. Now, here's your IP. Now, I have to blur mine out because these are individual. This is how you access your account. So you're going to take the IP number for your server IP address, and you're going to put that right here in your Moonlight. So I'll go ahead and enter the IP. Now, this seemed daunting at first, but it's really simple. This only takes a mere few minutes, and you're good to go. Now, once you put that IP in, you're going to see a little lock sign on your... Thing there. You want to click it and you're going to get a code that you're going to enter. So you're going to go to that console again. Okay. This is a code to connect Moonlight to your game stream service on your NVIDIA GeForce experience. So go back to console now. Start console. It'll be really fast. And see, this has popped up already automatically for you to put that code in. So we got our 0174. We'll put that in right here. And this is the only time you'll need to do this for any device you can that you connect to. You'll be needing a code for it only one time though. So now you see it's not locked anymore. We can stop our console. We're done with that. Now you just click on it and you can see that file you added. You click on uh, you can add games and things directly too. But here's the file to stream the whole PC. You click that and it's automatically going to come up using all your moonlight settings. And there you have it. Now we are fully into our maximum settings. 3900X 2080 super build 24 gigs of RAM. All right, let's take a look at storage real quick. So here's that 512 gigabyte SSD and there's the three terabyte secondary drive to install the games and, and programs or whatever I want. They're mostly games. Great storage, great amount of storage on here. Really, really was happy to see that. So first thing is speed test real quick so you can see what they're working with. Two milliseconds is very normal for me. I've gotten that every time. And of course they're advertised 500 down. And then they advertise 150 up, but I've been getting more into 400, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'll take it, but I know the uh, what you're guaranteed is that 150 up. So I got 504 download, which is very typical for me with that two millisecond ping. And now I'm getting that for something upload like I normally get. I'd love to have that at my house. My videos would go up so quickly. Um, but really good internet speed, no complaints here, especially for that upload for a service like this. That can be very, very important. So up next, quickly, we'll do our 
20. We'll do a Cinebench run. Now, I hit about a 1,000 points low considering it's a 3900X, but it's doing a lot to be a virtual machine, to encode and to stream and do all this stuff. So it's already taken a bit of a little bit of a hit and, uh, and whatnot anyways. But uh, considering all things and that they are using great hardware here, um, getting a score of 6117 is fantastic. And I will take it and it will push that 2080 Super just fine. So that's all that kind of stuff. Let's do the more fun thing. We're going to take a look at a few games. We're going to talk about latency and how does it feel to play games on maximum settings. Let's take a look and let's get into it. All right, so starting off with Call of Duty, let's take a look at our settings here. We're full screen. The uh, RTX 2080 Super showing up there. We're stuck at that 60, but we are streaming 120 with Moonlight, which definitely helps out a lot. We're doing that at 1440p, so we're running at unlimited frame rate. High settings on everything here, uh, not activating ray tracing. I don't typically run that in this game, so we're not going to do that right now, uh, probably in future testing, though. And also, I want to point out that we get open net, and I get that every time on maximum settings, and that's really awesome. I haven't played another cloud service anywhere that I don't have a moderate or strict NAT type. So to have open, I really, really like that, especially for Call of Duty. I definitely prefer that open NAT for matchmaking. So this game is great for me for latency because I'm used to playing this um, on a G-Sync monitor, uh, very smooth, very low input uh, latency and lag. Um, and I got to say that on maximum settings, this game is very, very playable. And at times, it almost feels as quick as my local. It's, it's not, but I want to say sometimes it seems like it almost is the latency for me. And I'll pull up those statistics uh, when we get to the end of Call of Duty here. But that for me, that latency is really good. Some of the best I've had. I play GeForce Now, Shadow PC, Stadia, all that kind of stuff. And they're all great. Um, everybody knows here on the channel I love GeForce Now and Shadow PC a lot. Um, but I will say for me here on the East Coast where I'm at, uh, using maximum settings, my, my latency, my input is even quicker than shadow a lot of times and it's really good for call of duty um, i actually had a decent round going because i really didn't have any latency issues uh, when i was trying to aim or move around so this was pretty good so go ahead check out the rest of this call of duty footage right here uh, and then we're going to jump into battlefield 5 next um, before we do that we'll take a look at those statistics here in just a minute as well and i'll show you that latency Alright, so that's enough of gameplay for now. With that, we're going to test more later. But here you can see my stats pulled up at the top there. And that's showing that variable, that rate, uh, Moonlight, doing up to 120 FPS. And you can see a pretty low... Uh, latency there and that uh, receive time of like six to seven milliseconds a lot of the time so that is why everything feels so quick for me and so smooth uh, this is really really good response and a nice frame right here uh, so I just wanted to point that out and I'll show that in future game test as well so jumping over to Battlefield 5 we're gonna go full ultra RTX but here's how I usually set up 1440p with all this stuff turned off DX12, we need that for ray tracing. No DLSS right now. I just want to show you how this runs. In future videos, we'll probably dive in a little bit deeper. No VSync right now and Ultra for everything. So it's going to hit the system pretty hard, but I thought this ran really well. I mean, a lot of systems have trouble running this game. It's not well optimized, um, even without ray tracing. And usually you got to be in a match for a couple of minutes at least before the stuttering stops. So, um, but really, it ran pretty well. And for having all ultra and ray tracing, and this being one of the first titles back then to get ray tracing, um, they've come a long way. And with the LSS, I'll tell you, those blurry images are pretty much gone as well. Ooh, that was a good one. Um, so you could even get better frame rate. But this, this was surprising. And with everything going on, that 3900X, those 24 virtual processes, they're... 
they're really doing well and and the, the 2080 super is doing well and you can see it it's not having any trouble pretty much being pushed and everything doing really good at 1080p you could definitely play even higher so i was pretty impressed with this um i'm gonna do a little bit more sniping which is also a nod to how decent the latency is for me because i'm using a controller and i was able to do some pretty decent sniping and stuff here so um go ahead and check out this bit of gameplay and then uh, i'll get back in here with you in just a minute So if you can't tell, I do love to snipe in Battlefield 5. Um, but anyways, game ran great. And again, the stream quality, the image quality, um, I am running at the 80 megabits per second bit rate. Um, so it's pretty good. But man, it's also some of the best I've experienced in cloud gaming as well. Uh, really nice job on that. So here's Control. So this is another game that if you're not familiar, can be very hard to run. It has full ray tracing implementation. It was one of the first games to do so. DLSS has been upgraded for this as well. We're going to be running all high settings, all ray tracing, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to sit here and play with the settings for just a minute. Um, just sitting still in this area. We're going to do some spinning around. And I want to show you some different settings. Right now we are 1440p resolution. With DLSS, I'm going to click on, which puts us at a 960 upscaled. Looks really good, to be honest. Um, a lot of times for this game, and when it first came out, it was a blurry game. It's gotten a lot better. And actually, the DLSS 2.0 in this game, in my opinion, gives it some of the best image quality, uh, even over when you have it turned off, which is surprising to say about DLSS, especially if you're familiar with 1.0. So going back straight up, 1080p render resolution, back to that normal frame right there. Now, one thing I will say, though, is even though you get hit hard on frames with all the ray tracing on, the stutters weren't too bad at all. Um, they've done pretty good with those, and the game looks great. Didn't have any problems with that. So let's go in here and bump up to the full native 1440p that I got going on here. So you'll see quite a hit down to 30s. If you were in some action and stuff going on, you would definitely go under 30s with ray tracing on for sure. But again, I believe running this 1440p with DLSS on is a great experience with this game. And you get the most image quality and beauty out of all the ray tracing they put into this game. And once you play this game with full ray tracing, you almost can't go back. But there you go. That's a nice, sharp, and good-looking image, honestly, with DLSS on. So we're going to stick with that and run around and do just a little bit of gameplay so you can see it in action. So we'll stick with the LSS. We'll leave everything high, leave all the ray tracing on. We'll jump around a little bit here, have a little bit of fun, check it out. And it does really, really well. Like I said, even a lot of the stutters that were in the game or that I used to have on my local build weren't really present here. Everything ran really well. If you've never played Control, I definitely recommend it. Very fun game. So there again, even with maximum everything on, even all that combat, all the explosions, everything happening, the stream quality stayed really nice, the game itself ran really nice, no stuttering, no issues, 
and there's a ton going on here so you could definitely tweak things to get 60 or above for sure but just kind of maxing everything out and going with that dlss this is what you get and i think it's really nice and it was surprising uh this is a pretty beast of a build this rtx 2080 super build that maximum pc has here now i have access to a 1080 as well but i've just really been enjoying running the 2080 super build and this has been a lot of fun um right now it's definitely in the top for uh, some of my favorite cloud gaming services right now. All right, so that's control. Uh, let's move on real quick. We're almost to the end of this video. I hope you've been enjoying it. Um, so this is just Need for Speed Heat real quick, 1440p ultra graphics. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because this is a hard game to run. This is the worst optimized racing game I've played in years. It's horrible. I have videos on the channel about it, but I thought, why not throw a racing game in? That's good for latency testing as well. Plus, this game's really, really hard to run for most systems. So figured, why not? The game ran typical how I thought it would uh, her, uh, horizon would be running way over 100 FPS right now easily and you'll see when we get towards the city we are gonna dip way down under that 60 mark so again this game is not well optimized it's very hard to run but I thought it'd be a good one to throw up and the latency feels nice I mean driving here I, I can't show you really but I can just tell you all the games that I've played on the service feel really good no real complaints the only thing I was talking about a little bit is some of the pricing and stuff like that but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the end of the video but for the most part the experience playing the games um, once you're in there you're loading up your game and you're playing the amount of storage you have and everything really really good experience for me here that's going to vary depending on where you live what country what state you know how far away you are but apparently they've told me the company has told me that where i'm at here on the u.s east coast actually should be really good for latency and they were right uh everything has felt great You can see even 48 frames per second, <laughs> even on a build like this. Like I said, this game is just cool. You, I can, you compare it to the last Need for Speed. I have a video on that as well, and it's just so different as far as the optimization. It's crazy. Forty-six, forty-three. <laughs> At least it doesn't stutter, though. At least it does stay smooth. I've seen it get stuttery on on some builds for sure. And you can see it's not even so much the GPU side. Like, this game is so horribly optimized for the CPU, for everything that has to happen. It just, it seriously bogs things down. I really thought they would update and fix it, but they never did, so. All right, so that's Need for Speed running on maximum settings, 2080 Super Build with the 3900X. All right, so final thoughts. This is a great service, one of my favorites so far. Uh, latency, very good as I've been saying, and of course for my location, I know that that matters, but it's felt really tight, really good. Their internet's great, 500 down, 150 or more up has been also really, really good on this tier. Stream quality is some of the best I've seen on cloud gaming for me where I'm at. Really, really good and clean. I am running 80 megabits per second on bit rate though. Storage is really good, 512 SSD and a three terabyte hard drive on this um, tier gives you lots of storage for all your games ease of use it's not bad at all you do have to use that open source moonlight but it works really really well and i've had a good experience with it so far performance is great with that 3900x with the 24 virtualized threads the 2080 super and 24 gigs of ram have been really really good performance wise price i'm not a fan of hourly pricing um, but it is a good value considering what you do get especially for people who aren't going to use it more than 10 20 hours a week but i would like to see some options for unlimited in the future and maybe that's something they can fit into the business model down the road so thanks a lot for coming to check out this video guys this has been my full overview of maximum settings cloud pc cloud gaming service this is their highest tier with the 2080 super and 3900x and i've really been enjoying the service so far i'm going to be making many many more videos in the future doing a lot of game testing with this service i'm definitely adding it to the channel it'll be something that's around for a while i'll be comparing it to things like shadow and geforce now 
and other cloud services as well. So if that's the kind of stuff you're interested in, please think about subscribing to the channel, ring that notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and definitely leave me your comments down below. Thanks again for checking out the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.